Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. I hope with this uh, the understanding on secondary growth is clear. So now that we have reached towards the end of the lesson, let us have a quick look at some of the questions. So here is the first question. Cork cambium forms tissues that form the cork. Do you agree with this statement? Explain. What is cord cambium? The layer of meristematic tissue which develops around the cortex region. And this will form new cells on outer side and inner side. And outer side, these new cells will form cork. So that means this statement is correct. Cord cambium basically form tissues that form the cork. So we, yes, we agree with this statement because cord cambium is a layer of meristematic tissue that develops from the cortical region and the cord cambium can form new cells on the outer side as well as inner side. Outer side it forms cork and inner side it forms secondary cortex. Let us look at the next question. It says explain the process of secondary growth in the stems of woody angiosperms with the help of schematic diagrams. What is its significance? Just now we were talking about the secondary growth, right? Let us quickly look at the steps once again. The first step would be the formation of intrafascicular cambium. Intrafascicular cambium is nothing but the vascular cambium between the xylem and phloem. So here you see these are the intrafascicular cambium, the green colored structure, intrafascicular cambium. The next step is formation of interfascicular cambium. Now some cells will join the intrafascicular cambium to form a ring like structure which is known as interfascicular cambium. Third step is the formation of cambial ring. This continuous ring of cambium is nothing but the cambial ring. Next is formation of secondary xylem because this cambial ring is meristematic in nature. Therefore, they can form new cells on inner as well as outer side. So on outer side, it forms. This is the cambial ring. This is the cambial ring. On outer side, it forms new cells that forms secondary phloem. And on the inner side, it forms new cells that forms the secondary xylem. So cells on the outer side of cambial ring differentiate into secondary phloem. And cells on the inner side of the cambial ring differentiate into secondary xylem. Now amount of secondary xylem is much more than that of the secondary phloem. And then the last one that is cork cambium. Now since the secondary phloem starts breaking up, the epidermis starts breaking up, to compensate for that, another layer of meristematic tissue develops here, which is called cork cambium. This cork cambium again can produce new cells on outer side as well as inner side. Outer side cells will form cork and the inner side cells form the secondary cortex. So cork and secondary cortex are formed by cork cambium. So this is the entire process of secondary growth in dicot stems. Now let us look at the next question. Cut a transverse section of young stem of a plant from your school and observe it under a microscope. How would you ascertain whether it is monocot stem or dicot stem? So what are the most important feature of a monocot stem and dicot stem? Think about the vascular bundles. How is it in monocot stem? In monocot stem, the vascular bundles are scattered. Whereas in dicot stem, the vascular bundles are arranged in ring pattern. So in dicot stem, the vascular bundles are in ring pattern. Whereas in monocot stem, the vascular bundles are scattered. So looking at these things you can actually tell whether it is monocot or dicot. Right? So in monocot you see they are all scattered. In dicot they are arranged in a ring pattern. So that is how you can differentiate between the two. The transverse section of a plant material shows the following anatomical features. The vascular bundles are conjoined, scattered 
and surrounded by a scleral chymatous bundle sheath. Where do we see conjoint vascular bundles? We see them in stem, right? So that means since the vascular bundles are conjoint, that means it is a stem. Vascular bundles are also scattered. That means this is a monocot stem because in dicot stem, it is in the ring pattern. It is also surrounded by bundle sheath. So both of these together confirm that it is a and third one, flow and parenchyma is absent. So it is definitely a monocot because in dicot, flow and parenchyma is present. Because see, even in dicot, the uh, vascular bundles are scattered, but they form a ring pattern. This blundle sheath also says that it can be a dicot, but when it says that flow and parenchyma is absent, it has to be a monocot because in dicot, flow and parenchyma is present. So this is identified as a monocot stem. Let us look at the next one. How is the study of plant anatomy useful to us? This is something which we discussed in the first slide. Why are we studying this lesson? Because once we know the internal structure of a plant, there are many things that we can actually do for the betterment of plants. It helps us to understand the internal plant structure, how are things arranged internally, so that we, need, we know, we get to understand the behavior of the plant, we get to understand the processes taking place inside the plant. We can differentiate between monocots and dicots because with the, but looking from outside, we do not know which plant is monocot and which plant is dicot. But if we study the internal structure, we can very easily say whether it is a monocot or a dicot. Understanding evolution in plants, looking at the internal structure, we can also say that, okay, these plants would have come from these plants because if there is a similarity in the internal structure, we can say that, okay, they look similar. So maybe there is some relation in their evolution or let us suppose if two structures are similar and it looks like as if one structure is little more advanced than the other. So we get to know which plant came first. Helps in understanding the plant physiology. Now, if you are well aware of the internal structure, you can actually decide what kind of environment is needed for that plant. You can better take care of the plant and that means you can improve a lot in the crop production as well. What is periderm? How does periderm formation takes place in dicot stem? So periderm is nothing but Cork, cambium, cork and secondary cortex, they are together known as periderm. So it is a collective term used for all these three. Now cork cambium is nothing but a layer of meristematic tissue that develops in the cortical region. Why does it develop? To protect the broken or to compensate for the broken epidermis during secondary growth. This being a meristematic layer can produce cells on the outer side as well as inner side and the outer side cells form cork and the inner side cells form secondary cortex. Now let us look at the last question. Describe the internal structure of a dorsi ventral leaf with the help of label diagram. What is a dorsi ventral leaf? Dorsi ventral is nothing but a dicot leaf. This is just another term for a dicot leaf. Similarly, sometimes this term is used for a monocot leaf. Iso bilateral. So iso bilateral is nothing but a monocot leaf. So here, this is how the dicot leaf looks like where you have the outer cuticle which is waxy whose thickness decreases as we go down. We have two layers of epidermis, one above and one below. We have two types of mesophyll cells. The topper one, top layer is called palisade mesophyll which are compactly arranged side by side and the lower mesophyll is the spongy parenchyma. So these are all basically parenchyma cells but the spongy mesophyll has lot of open spaces and air cavities so that the gases can be stored here. However, photosynthesis takes place in palisade mesophyll because chloroplast is present in this layer. So the process of photosynthesis happens in the palisade mesophyll. The vascular tissues are present in this pattern where xylem is surrounded by phloem. Bundle sheaths which are sclerenchymatous in nature are also present. So this is how the internal structure of a dorsi ventral leaf would look like.
So with this, we have reached towards the end of the lesson. And I hope that this lesson on anatomy of flowering plants would have helped you to understand the internal structure of root, stem and leaf. Please remember that uh, if you are able to understand things with the help of a diagram, that is going to really help you big time because you will not tend to forget things. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.